Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Brilliant. A few months ago, I made a video covering the Simpsons shorts on Disney+. And while it went over well, I did have a lot of people in the comments telling me I was being unfair to the current Simpsons, saying that it's actually really good again if I would just give it a chance. I hadn't really kept up with the show all that much since like season 29, which for this show feels like nothing, but to be fair, that is four entire seasons of television. So I figured I'd dive into what they're doing these days with a handful of season 33 episodes. And what I found was mostly just really mediocre. Now to be fair, the show still has its high points. Almost every episode I watch still has a joke or three that lands really well. And for the most part, the whole thing is still very watchable. I love these characters, so spending time with them is never terrible, even if the show is far, far from what it once was. But then there are those episodes that are just completely emblematic of everything I don't like about the show now. The episodes that make me feel so disconnected from what I like about The Simpsons that I have to go back and rewatch Mr. Plow to remind myself that this show was, for a large stretch of time, easily one of the best TV comedies ever. And it's one of those really rough episodes that I'm talking about today. The good news for season 33 is that it got the worst out of the way early, because no half hour this year is anywhere near as bad as its premiere, the star of the backstage. The Simpsons figures, sofa, and boob tube sold separately, only from Mattel. One thing that really surprised me going into this episode is apparently they just don't show the intro anymore. I know they've had a shortened version of it for a really long time, but now they've disposed of the couch gag almost entirely with just the choir singing the title and then the show starting. Is this a massive issue? I mean, no, at the end of the day it's just a theme song, but it is surprising to see considering it might be the most famous TV opening in history, and maybe it's just me, but the couch gags are often like a high point of later day Simpsons. Beyond that though, I found it really odd how this doesn't really follow the structure of a Simpsons episode at all. The episode starts with the family at a memorial service for Marge's high school theater director. There she decides that she's going to get the theater gang back together and restage their old musical about Y2K. She assembles them and discovers that they didn't really like her all that much in high school. It's incredibly straightforward with just one A plot, no B plot, and zero unexpected story turns. I only mention this because The Simpsons has a pretty specific story structure that the Golden Age writers took seriously. A good example would be something like Season 5's Homer Goes to College. The first few minutes see Mr. Burns hiding Homer and the other two dumbest employees away from public safety inspections, until that blows up in his face and Homer almost causes a meltdown. For those first five minutes or so, it looks like it's going to be a very Burns and Smithers centric episode. But around that four to six minute mark, Simpsons episodes tend to take a turn and become about something else entirely. In this case, Homer having to go to college to pass a class, eventually making some nerdy friends who have to move into the Simpsons home after Homer gets them expelled. Apart from the Treehouse of Horror episodes and some other notable exceptions, this is the classic Simpsons storytelling style. It's a lot of fun and it encourages odd tangents and funny subplots. That's nowhere to be seen in the star of the backstage, and I think it makes the show feel a lot more simplistic and honestly pretty dull. Now after 33 seasons, maybe it is fair to want to abandon that structure more and more, but if that structure is too played out and no longer works, maybe it's just time to end the show. Because to me, that's just as key an aspect of The Simpsons as any individual character is. But even setting that aside and trying to take the episode on its own terms, I gotta say, Marge-centric episodes are really tough to watch these days for one simple reason the sad decline of Julie Kavner's voice. I want to be nice here because Julie Kavner has been incredible on this show through the years. She has an Emmy for season 3's I Married Marge and it's a crime that she doesn't have more. But the fact is, after three plus decades, her voice has understandably deteriorated to the point where it's distracting and honestly a little sad. Compare her performance here to what Marge used to sound like. It's me! Yes said yes! We're putting on a musical! Oh, Bart, I can't believe you did this! I just have to imagine that the Marge voice has been tough on Kavner's vocal cords, and the result is that the character just seems always off now. 
The producers seem to know this too, because here's the thing, this episode is a full-blown musical, but where the show has asked Kavner to sing as Marge in the past, here they brought in Kristen Bell to do all of her singing. It's really weird how they set it up too. Marge has a line about how she imagines herself singing like a Disney princess, so then for the rest of the episode, when her neck starts to glow with, I guess, Disney magic, Belle takes over from there. The rest of the voice cast also has a lot of songs, but all of them do their own singing. So every time it happens, it's pretty jarring, and there's not even jokes about it, making it all the more weird. But the strangest element of this episode has got to be this high school theater troupe. I know The Simpsons has been doing this for years now, but it'll always be bizarre to see flashbacks to the 90s where Marge and Homer are teenagers. The Simpsons was 10 seasons in in 1999 and always featured a ton of flashbacks to the 70s and the 80s. But now here we are with a teenage Homer and Marge singing about Y2K. I know the writers like to wave this off, like why care about the continuity of a cartoon? And to a certain extent, I do understand that, but when they constantly change these backstories, it erases a lot of what gave these characters any texture to begin with. It's one thing to say that Marge, Dr. Hibbert, Barney, Smithers, and Milhouse's dad all had high school theater together in 1999. As a Simpsons fan, that's really strange to me, but I guess I can roll with it. But that's really just the surface level problem, because when they do things Things like this, they tend to forget or ignore old pieces of characterization that I really liked. Like this episode implies that Barney drank so much in high school that he forgot he slept with Sasha, a new character. That bugged me because like, I've seen the show. I know Barney was a focused Harvard bound student in high school until Homer gave him his first beer the night before the SATs. You can say that's just a nitpick and this show has never cared about continuity much and I get that. But that was a really good and surprisingly tragic backstory for Barney that they threw away. And if you do that often enough, what's really left to these characters? I think all of these little things add up. When you sandblast away all those melancholy and often really well thought out backstories and replace them with easy Nirvana or Y2K jokes, you've really shot yourself in the foot. At the end of the day, The Simpsons is rooted in a very specific time and place. The writers, who are now mostly 50 or older, drew from their own families and childhoods. Things like Marge getting bullied for her monkey's lunchbox as a kid feel pretty specific. Barney and Homer having dads that fought in World War II is actually like an important part of those characters to me. All of these details aren't just empty, nostalgic gestures towards the past, like Y2K is used here. They're comically exaggerated, but drawn from real experiences. Springfield was created to satirize life in America near the end of the 20th century, and I don't think you can just transplant all of that to the 2020s and do episodes where the characters have podcasts or Bart becomes a pro gamer or whatever. It always feels really forcefully stapled onto a show that was built to reflect the late 80s and early 90s. And because the show seems terrified to ever really mess with the core elements, what we're left with is changes that are mostly superficial and usually amount to like, what if teen Homer was actually into 90s hip hop. It'll always be weird that Homer and Marge went on a date to see The Empire Strikes Back in their 20s and now they're in high school the year The Phantom Menace came out. But honestly, all of this would be a lot easier to forgive if the jokes were just better. I think that's what made this episode stick out more than most modern Simpsons for me. It's just filled with so many songs that aren't funny. Honestly, there aren't even that many attempts at jokes in these songs. They're fairly straightforward and pleasant musical theater numbers sung by people who mostly aren't actually singers, trying to sing in cartoon voices. Oh, and also Kristen Bell for some reason. It just feels really desperate and cloying in a way that this show shouldn't. I know a lot of people would say that it's been decades since The Simpsons was at its height, so why should I even care about this anymore? And you know what? You probably have a point. But I watch old Simpsons episodes all the time. You can flip between season 7 and season 30 really easily now, which I think makes the contrast between the two a lot harder to swallow. The Springfield of those early seasons may have been created a long time ago, but for the most part, I think it holds up incredibly well today, which is what makes an episode like the star of the backstage just kind of depressing to me. She realized for every idiot, there is a compulsion. <laughs> Nothing like a good belly flap. 
So this week, I really just wanted to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant has been with the channel for years now, and I'm always happy to have them aboard. Everyone who managed to get to the end of my overlong Simpsons rant should definitely check them out, because Brilliant is an interactive learning platform that lets you tackle new math, science, and computer science concepts in a fun, hands-on way. Their new course, Everyday Math, is especially helpful for people like me, who never really excelled at the subject growing up. This gives you a fresh start, focusing on the foundations of math and building your knowledge from the ground up. Because what Brilliant is really great at is giving you the tools you need to tackle STEM topics you might find intimidating. With Brilliant, you learn by doing, at your own pace and on your own schedule, so it's never been easier to tackle these subjects head on. So go to brilliant.org midnight and try it for free, and the first 200 people that go to that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. That's brilliant.org midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.